call all the distinguished speakers on the dais, please. Thank you all. I would risk, respect, uh, I would request Dr. K. Narsaya, ADG Processing Engineering, ICAR Headquarter, to take over the conversation. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. And uh, I welcome you all for this session on uh, uh, research and innovations in post-service management. And uh, uh, I think we can call uh, in terms of food processing, maybe in the morning you were toasted like toasting and now we are going to roast you. So <laughs> in the afternoon after you have lunch, so we will be having a uh, discussion on different aspects of post-service management. So the basic idea is how this uh, post-service management will help seamlessly supplying the raw materials and foods to the food processing industry as well as to the consumers <laughs> with uh, good quality retention. So first uh, I request uh, Dr. Devendra Dhingra to give a presentation on uh, storage aspects, uh, bulk uh, storage of grains. Uh, as well as decentralized storage. So what should be the uh, policy thinking uh, now? Because our uh, economy is mostly food grain based economy. Though our agriculture, mainly our uh, agriculture economy, uh, food grains like wheat and rice and uh, pulses, oil seeds, these are the major commodities in agriculture. So storage aspects of these, how we have the uh, storage facilities and what uh, policy interventions we need in the storage uh, area, Dr. Dhingra will take over. And uh, Good I, uh, uh, before uh, he give it, he is a principal scientist in ICR headquarter, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, with uh, rich experience in, uh, uh, at, uh, he worked at CIFET as well as he has uh, wide uh, uh, exposure of uh, international exposure also in post service management so now i request uh, dr dhingra uh, good afternoon everyone uh, maybe good evening so is there anyone who will be playing the presentation or maybe i can do it from there So once again, good afternoon to all of you. And first of all, uh, thanks to all of you who have come as an audience to this hall, because you have shown some great interest in post-harvest management and other things. So I came to this uh, venue at around 2 p.m. and I went to Food Street and then I went to some uh, hall number 14. But I observed that some machines were there, some products were there, mostly we focused on more of the processed products. But what is the base, right? So food grain is one thing, which is the base. I will come to that in my presentation. In a little bit, I would like to sensitize you about the importance of food grains in our diet and what is the importance of the storage. And these challenges are going to remain. Climate is changing, our habits are changing, new grains are coming up. Now we have started thinking of millets. Earlier we were not thinking of millets. Our rice has come, our Seasons are changing because of the climate. So the challenges for storage will remain. So first let me take you through, through the overview of the presentation, what I am going to speak. One is the background of grain storage. Another is what is the importance of grains. How much is its production in our country? I will not take you to a worldwide. Then what is the, how the grain moves from farm to the consumer? Who is producing it? Farmers are producing it and it, whether you are consuming grains as such or you are using the end product. So it is the grain which is moving from the farmers to the consumers. As such, some people may be buying the whole grain, some people are buying flour, some people are buying 
milled pulses some people are only buying processed products so we'll see where will the grain stay from farmers to the consumers how many time it exchanges hands right what are the issues somewhere it is surplus somewhere it is deficient so you have to move it for the food security you have to feed all the population then what kind of uh, grain storages are available internationally as well as in our own country i will just show you few pictures of silos and the warehouses i think uh, most of the audience is young may not have visited silos or warehouses where the grains are kept i have an elaborate presentation but i have just clicked a few pictures into this then what is the importance of bag and bulk storage a little bit of comparison i will take you to that and then conclusions what kind of research is required if some of you i think are students probably in food technology or food science so if you look into grain storage what kind of research areas are there so let us go through this india's population is 1.4 billion it is 18% of the global population of 7.9 billion and we have 11% of the global arable land which we are on which we are cultivating grains food grains cereals pulses oil seeds fruits vegetables plantation crops and everything in india also we have a largest food program under national food security act 2013 which covers almost 81.3 crore people of india what is this scheme this act legally entitles up to 75% of the rural population and 50% of the urban population to receive subsidized food grains under targeted public distribution system how many of you have seen these public distribution systems ration depots how many of you have purchased grains from there oh so we have a good number of audience so the grain has to reach that place all over the country maybe every village taluka or the towns now comes how much of the grains are retained by the farmers on an average farmers retain around 60% of the produce for their own consumption they need it for their own food for the food of their family they also treat it as a seed they also want to feed the animals sometimes the grains because animal husbandry is also uh, increased in india is india is the number one milk producer in the world and farmers they store the grain in various traditional and modern storage structures right now our main focus is only targeted on the government agencies or the traders which procure the grains and which store the grains so we talk about bag storage bulk storage wherever i go i discuss is it farmers also retain a large chunk but the quantity each farmer retains is could be half ton to 1 ton 1.5 tons right they cannot have very elaborate uh, structures so government is also thinking of that warehouse regulatory development authority was there how we can make warehouses in the rural areas where the farmers can bring in their grains 500 kg 1000 kg and then they can keep it right but still we will see how we are progressing in that so what is the importance of uh, grains food grains in our diet you must have gone to the food street you must have taken your lunch right and you are taking food every day how much of energy comes from the food grains so i made a calculation more than 70% of the energy supply from the food we consume in india is met from cereals pulses and oil seeds so look at the importance we take we we take milk we take meat eggs fruits and vegetables very important for nutrition but what is running our body just like we put petrol and diesel in our cars trucks aircrafts so what is making us run all the day it is basically the food grain so that is the importance so 70% of the energy which we have, i may not be taking lot of cereals or pulses i may be taking meat eggs and other things but on an average 70% of the energy is supplied by the cereals pulses and oil seeds in a traditional kind of indian setup so who would like to store food grain and why this is a question from who anyone can answer first is i talked about the national uh, food security act so the government is interested in buying and storing the food grains right 
farmers they want for their own consumption they want to store it traders if i am a miller small scale i would like to buy oil seeds extract oil and sell right so we have to see who wants to store food grains why we want to store food grains i will come in detail to this so here i will i have just come to the production you know all of you can google and get the data so i will not spend much time on this food grain and oil seed production this has crossed 300 million tons in our country recently so with this our storage requirement is also on the increase we need more space as our population is increasing we all need housing can we stay all night in the open sun or in the open day or night so similarly our production of food grains is increasing we need some housing storage means housing for the food grains it could be anything but we need some place where we can it protect the grains from the environment right we can protect it from the insects pests right we can maintain the quality as well as the quantity in india grain storage capacity is approximately 145 million tons it is combined with food corporation of india state warehousing corporations right central warehousing corporation and these agencies have schemes which are promoting entrepreneurs to build more and more storage structures which they take on rent right so as the capacity is increasing as our population is increasing we have to feed 81 crore people we have to give them subsidized food but rest of the people also need all are not farmers i am not farmer i am not getting it from the public distribution system somewhere i am also needing the food grains and pulses and oil and everything so let us look at the journey of grain from farm to storage to consumer so i have given different color to storage becomes very important food grains are produced seasonally but we are consuming it throughout the year 365 days right i think morning afternoon and dinner there is no meal which is without food grains or these commodities you can check on your own whatever you eat you have food grains in some form or the other in your breakfast lunch and dinner every day and 365 days in the year so storage becomes very important first is grain procurement when we look at uh, developing technologies for storage or how the grain is produced everyone knows it is produced in the farm grain procurement market yards are there what kind of equipment is there traders agencies labor requirement right so when we look into all these aspects we will be able to decide if i am going to put up a storage structure i will look into all these factors then primary processing of grain can i just keep the grain which the farmers will bring now i will have to do some cleaning grading drawing and then in our traditional warehouses we need to first bag it we have jute bags as per compulsory jute order we are only allowed to use jute bags in the country each bag is having a capacity of 50 kg so the grain is bagged in that in the jute bags sealed stitched and then loaded into trucks and then will ready for the movement or for storage similarly grain handling and, mo and movement that is very important because it involves lot of manpower materials and machinery now here i would like to there are in some grains there are few surplus states and there are many deficient states in the country just like in the world we have some countries which are having surplus grains so there are some countries which are having deficient they buy from the countries which are having surplus grains during ukraine war you must have heard of there was a problem in moving the wheat out of ukraine and the price of wheat has gone up similarly australia is a big exporter right india exports to some extent but that is on the government control sometimes it is stopped sometimes it is allowed and maybe now india may need to import some wheat to maintain our buffer stocks so grain handling and movement when we look at storage import export surplus states deficient all these parameters come into play we have to look into all these factors then during grain storage so what is the type of grain whether it is rice paddy wheat maize oil seeds what are its physical characteristics those who are studying food science and food technology or post harvest you may be knowing what is its bulk density how is it varying with the weight what is its frictional area right then the purpose of storage whether it is for seed food or feed what is the duration whether it is for short term or long term 
what is the weather or climate of the region rainfall ambient temperature what is the day night fluctuation wind velocity how we are going to manage the pests what are the common pests in our country which affect rice or wheat or other food grains how we are going to maintain the quality then comes from storage you have to move the grain to the ration depots or to the flour mills rice mills or to the traders or for self consumption so you have to see how the grain will move from warehouse or silo to the place where it is going to be processed into further products flour or end products food grain now we have seen that it is a multifaceted many dimensions it has many research areas it has many problems and issues it has so it looks very simple when we are not thinking we think oh food grain it's okay and keeping it is okay but it involves lot of activities lot of housing it is different grain properties are different so it's a multi dimensional multi faceted right so it is not very simple and we need to focus on this our country as a whole or our research we have to focus on various aspects of grain storage sir thoda accelerator daba de <laughs> okay we started late huh <laughs> warehouses for bag storage we have already discussed then in bulk storage we have galvanized iron corrugated uh, silos or concrete silos these could be flat bottom silos or these could be hopper bottom silos right and now the government has come up with a new scheme for decentralized grain storage involving PACS primary agricultural credit societies we will see who will use this infrastructure what is our readiness to if we build these grain storages how we can whether we have the trained manpower to look after the grain when it is stored over there i think i have covered this i will skip these so here you can see some of the galvanized iron corrugated silos this is the way they look these are some of the pictures i have taken from various places in india and the neighboring countries skip this also these are some concrete silos uh, this is not picture from india this is from ua fujaira port they import the grains from U, uh, europe and they keep these grains in these silos over there and then it is in the gulf they are distributing i will skip this some of the accessory lot of equipment is required in these uh, silos it is not so easy that you make a tall structure and put the grain loading unloading aeration fumigation it needs lot of technologies and trained manpower these are some of the storage structures or bags these are very common you must have seen while going through punjab haryana which are surplus states so you must have come across certain warehouses which are keeping the grains on the sides of the roads this is how the bags are being kept over there so bag storage and there is always a discussion in government circles whether bag storage is better or bulk storage is better right bag storage is simple even in this room you can bring the bags and keep stack them right and if you reduce the temperature like this very good the grains will remain very happy the way we like air conditioning grains also like right has anyone understood that can we keep the grains under cold temperature low temperature yes you keep it at around 16 degrees celsius you will not need any fumigation any chemicals because the insects and pests will not be able to grow and multiply so the picture i showed you in the grains which are being kept in ua they are cooling the grains they are not using any phosphine for managing the pests but whether we will be able to do that for so many million tons of grains we can't even have a cooled environment for our houses and offices for all the people right in a bag storage in this room i can put rice wheat maize in the bag so different grains can come but if it is a silo it's a single structure bulk then i cannot mix the grains so i will have to have a single unit for that quantity so all these factors have to be seen for bag and bilos uh, silos let us skip all these other points i think that's not very important okay i will skip this also only thing is bulk storage which we have galvanized iron corrugated they need less space we can use the height the way we are uh, having multi story buildings in um, our uh, big cities like new delhi mumbai kolkata right now we are going 26 stories 50 stories similarly we can also have tall structures for grains up to 10 to 12 stories high 
So, we can put the grain, so we can have less space. Now, space is going to be a shortage. So, silos is good for that. So, there are comparative advantages for silos and there are comparative advantages for bags in our country. The only thing is we do not have lot of facility for moving the grain in bulk. right? So, even if we store them in silos, when we have to put them in trucks or railway uh, wagons, we will have to bag them again. right? So, again we will need bagging. So, we will not be able to avoid bags. So, another unit operation. So, cost of storage is also important because ultimately we may not be very sensitive when we are buying some dresses or shoes or makeup things, but when we are buying food we are very price sensitive. So, the agencies which are involved in grain storage they are also very sensitive about how much is the cost for storage of grains for a year. Please summarize. <laughs> Coming to that. So, I will only come to the conclusions part that need R and D, we need R and D as well as capacity building. Our requirement is increasing, our population is increasing, not only for storage, for grain movement also and for managing the grains for 6 months to 1 years to 2 years in buffer stock. So, insects and pests, they love the grains, they come and attack. So, we need to and the climate change, if there is sudden rainfall, humidity goes up, the grain will in gain moisture. So, there will be problems. Apart from insects and pests, we also have microorganisms growing in the grains which are leading to some mycotoxins. So, research on grain storage, quality issues, insect pest management is going to remain a continuous process for our society and for our R&D organizations. It is not a simple area, it is a very complicated area, complex area and I think we, uh, all the governments and all the policy makers need to focus on this on a continuous basis. Thank you for your attention. If there are any we, questions, uh, we can, can take it now? We can take it at the end. Uh, if any pressing question is there, one or two we can take. Otherwise, we will have discussion at the end. Anybody is having any important point or anything to make? Okay. Uh, okay Dr. Thank, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Dr. Dingra. Now, I request uh, Dr. P. Narendra Raju. Uh, he will be talking about packaging, trends and innovations. Uh, for uh, food commodities as well as processed foods. Uh, Dr. Narendra Raju is a senior scientist at uh, National Dairy Research Institute in Karnal and uh, is a young dynamic researcher in working on packaging uh, and uh, recent developments in packaging he will come. Very good evening to one and all. Uh, Dr. Narsaya sir. Dr. Devinder Dingra, Dr. Nachiket, Dr. Vishwakarma, ladies and gentlemen and dear students. Uh, at the outset, uh, I am really thankful for the organizers to giving me, uh, for giving me this opportunity to present a few points which are uh, in the active research and development in the area of food packaging. So quickly, I will give you the status of the global packaging industry just to mention a point that packaging industry is the largest client of food processing industry. So, the food packaging industry as well as food package, uh, processing industry go hand in hand any kind of developments or changes that takes place is going to affect both the industries. And the current packaging market value is about 1100 billion US dollars of which nearly 35 percent is uh, contributed by the food industry. And if you look at the Indian uh, packaging industry too, it is of the uh, similar trend where the flexible packaging materials contribute to the largest share. And we all know that the per capita consumption of packaging materials in India is too low compared to the global uh, developed countries. In other words, the European Union or the US, but still there is lot of scope for processed and packaged foods in our country too. Now, there are several key drivers which, which are forcing our uh, packaging industry to move forward. As I said, there are certain factors in the food processing industry too and some of them have been depicted on the screen for your uh, easy understanding. And the two important things which have a direct relevance to food processing industry is the convenience food solutions as well as the health awareness among the consumers. 
And the third important thing is the environmental consciousness. Out of all these factors, these three are the important ones which are affecting the R&D in packaging sector related to food processing industry. Now, if I want to list out what are the top trends in food packaging, I could have made numbering, but it is not possible to give one particular factor edge over the other. But the top three are the ones like the sustainable packaging solutions, the smart packaging solutions as well as simplified designs. These three are the top three that the industry is looking forward and trying to meet and address the problems at their hand. Quickly, I will give you in next five minutes the overview of all these developments. Starting with the sustainable food packaging, the United Nations development, uh, United Nations have given the sustainable development goals, number 17 in total. And food packaging has direct relevance with five of these, where one of the important one is responsible consumption as well as production. So, the way we produce, the way we consume as well as the way we throw the packaging materials is one important thing that we are looking at. And to address this, the environmental challenges that the packaging material or the packaging waste is posing, people are trying to find alternative solutions. And during the last couple of decades, Several researchers and industries have come with different solutions. However, one important conclusion is that none of them could practically replace any of the petrochemical based plastic. So, there is a need to work more on this aspect, but still there are some solutions looking at the regulatory uh, implications like the single use plastics ban. People have come out with compostable plastics, but not everyone are clearly understanding what exactly it is but there are certain solutions which can address this issue. So, in, in order to look at the biodegradability of different packaging materials, people are trying to reduce the lag phase that is applicable for the degradation of the polymers. And any of the scientists in the world, if he is coming with a solution to degrade the plastics, sure is going to get a Nobel Prize in the years to come. The second aspect is the active food packaging. Now, active food packaging is that seg segment of food packaging which leads or which is a network of the three important components of the packaged food. The environment which is both inside and outside the package, the product itself as well as the packaging materials. The interaction of all these three will help in extending the shelf life of the food materials. And there are several components like the oxygen scavengers which have been addressing the food processing industry to meet the oxidative to reduce the oxidative related oxygen related or oxygen mediated related uh, changes in the processed food and moisture absorbers and the horticultural industry like the ethylene scavengers. Now, what is new in this? We have been learning or knowing about these components of active packaging, but the important thing is the know-how is now available in India. The Indian Council of Agriculture Research has come out with the low cost oxygen scavengers as well as the carbon dioxide scavengers from one of our sister organizations in uh, Cochin has come out with these kind of low cost solutions. And we also have in the recent uh, past, the Japanese researchers have found out that the Oya caves which are uh, in the Japanese islands, people have found out that the horticultural produce do not get spoiled at a faster rate. And they came to know that they naturally have some ethylene scavenging capability. So, now we are trying to bring out that and introduce into food packaging. Another segment is the smart food packaging. Now, when we say smart, it means that the packaging materials are not just active, but they are trying to monitor the internal headspace and communicating with the external stakeholders, anyone in the supply chain. So, these kind of uh, solutions which are mostly colorimetric in nature or electronic driven like the RFID, the near field communication uh, systems as well as the mobile phone mediated solutions. So, now if you look at all the solutions, the three things which have uh, make which, which made a dent in the packaging industry are the time temperature indicators which contains the thermochromic inks that can depict the change in the storage temperature where a decision can be made by the stakeholders to look at what went wrong in the supply chain. The second one is the freshness indicators. Western world has already 
commercialize the freshness indicators which change the color even without opening the pack one can know whether the quality of the product is uh, good or whether it is risky or it is already spoiled. So, such solutions are already, already available for horticultural commodities as well as meat industry. In the dairy segment and food grain segment, it is a new one. Now, these are the uh, important uh, recent innovations that we uh, have uh, come out with in Indian uh, uh, processed dairy products segment, where the uh, oxygen indicators have been developed with an indigenous know-how using electrospinning technique. We also have a special microorganism isolated from spoiled dairy products where a microbial smart time temperature indicator was developed and the advanced trials are in progress now. And the last one on your right side of your screen, you can see that the freshness indicators where a packaged dairy product can be visualized even without opening the pack, the real time quality status. So, in, in a series of about uh, these studies, we could develop six different freshness indicators for different dairy products. The last one is the edible films and coatings. People have started with, uh, started with developing edible films and uh, coatings for different uh, horticultural commodities in the beginning. Now, later looking at its versatility, we are using this edible films and coatings in the form of the nutraceuticals delivery. So, the processed food also uh, the edible films can also be used as a fortificants or vehicles for delivery of important nutraceuticals and fortificants. So, we have a plethora of biopolymers which can be used as edible films, but what are important for formulating this bio uh, edible films is you need to have important components like plasticizers which depend on the type of polymer that we are using. The second one the additives for what functionality we are trying to develop an edible film or coating that decides what kind of component is required. So, you have multiple applications we can discuss at the end. So, with this I, I uh, conclude the talk uh, saying that we have a number of options and uh, solutions to mitigate some of the uh, problems which are in the food industry through the recent innovations. Thank you very much. Thank you Dr. Raju. Uh, any quick questions? Otherwise, we will take a detailed discussion at the end. Thank okay. You. Thank you. And uh, uh, thanks, Dr. Raju, for a nice uh, comprehensive talk with and uh, managing time also. Thank you. I now request uh, Dr. R. K. Vishwakarma. <coughs> is uh, project coordinator of uh, AACRPN post harvest engineering and technology at uh, CIFET Ludhiana. He will be deliberating on uh, food loss and waste, uh, how uh, these uh, are measured and how we can reduce these food loss and waste. And uh, yesterday you have heard our Honorable Prime Minister uh, emphasizing the prevention of food loss and waste. So, now we, we will just uh, talk in detail about uh, how these are measured and how we can reduce these food loss and waste, in especially in perishables. Thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Narsaya, Dr. Nachiket, Dr. Rao, uh, uh, Dr. Dhingra and friends. Uh, uh, this is uh, one of the important topics for all of us and concern also, uh, the food loss and waste. We know, uh, I will talk about uh, mostly about India and in, in, in Indian context. So, how the losses are there and uh, how it, these are taking place. So, basically if we see uh, the food losses are post harvest losses and wastage. Uh, it can be segregated into different components. Number first, first comes physical losses or we can say quantitative losses. Uh, where a measurable quantity goes out of the food chain and that cannot be used for the human consumption. and the uh, this happens when its form is not changed. Suppose when uh, we are taking uh, juice out of fruit, then if loss is taking place in the juice, then it doesn't be, it, it will not come into the post harvest loss, it will come into the processing loss. So, this is first post harvest losses, quantitative, then comes qualitative losses, even uh, it can happen uh, by any means, by suppose. Uh, uh, value of fresh produce is more, value of uh, uh, 3 days or 5 days old produce is less. Uh, 
so this may be a qualitative loss nutritive uh, nutrition or some other parameters which are going to will uh, uh, decrease the value or reputation these are the qualitative losses third thing comes our processing losses when we take any food uh, any agricultural material or livestock produce and when it is processed so some of the portion becomes non edible uh, and it goes with the we can say the non edible portion for example milling of pulses the theoretical recovery uh, of uh, pulses uh, adal can be 85% but uh, practically we get only 72 to 74% or we can say 72% it means we are losing 13% of the edible material which is going as a animal feed so this is the third loss which is which comes under the processing losses and fourth one is the very serious concern for all of us and that is food wastage when we uh, grow the food or food product uh, then convert in uh, process it and then add value and when it is ready for consumption and then we throw it uh, by uh, due to any reason then it is going to create a problem for every aspect and it is not coming into the into the food value chain our value chain and we have put lot of energy and everything and then we are throwing it means we are wasting it so this is uh, these are the four categories of the food loss and waste is uh, uh in indian context if we talk uh in 2005 6 we were losing our uh, our post harvest losses were of the uh, range uh, it was from 5 to 18% and the value was rupees 45000 crores uh in 2014 15 the same uh in 45 crops and commodities at national level we were losing around uh, 4.5 to 50 16% of the food grains livestock produce and fruits and vegetables and the loss value was rupees 92651 crores and uh, in today's context or we can say uh, one study which was conducted by ministry of food processing industries in 2021 22 and report came it is telling that in 2022 Uh, our losses were around 4 to 15% uh, in uh, all agricultural and livestock produce and it is worth 152000 crores so this is only food loss and quantitative loss we have not considered the quality loss or food wastage in uh, india if we talk about india uh, the food wastage is around 50 kg per capita per year uh, whether it is fruits vegetables or we, if we take uh, total uh, agricultural produce as a system then it is around 50 kg per capita per year uh, in developed world uh, earlier the concept was different that uh, we were considering that the food wastage uh, at household level i am talking uh, at household level in the developed world is more and in the underdeveloped or undeveloped countries it is less but this concept has also changed uh, because those developed countries has taken the steps to reduce the food wastes and at present except indian conditions uh, in developed world the food wastes is 71 kg per capita per year whereas in uh, underdeveloped countries it is around 91 kg per capita per year so scenario has changed because they have changed their habits they have tried and uh, uh, they have reduced the losses as well as wastage in our context uh, yes uh, we have also been able to reduce our losses particularly if we talk about the food corporation of india which handles around uh, 70 million tons of Uh, food grains particularly rice and wheat in the whole year and uh, their uh, in 2012-13 uh, their losses were around uh, 0.35% at present they are gaining around 
point one five percent. They they have a gain of point one five percent. So they have reduced their total operational losses, particularly in storage aspects, by point five percent, and that worth around five hundred forty crores. So FCI is saving five hundred forty crores in this context. So what are the regions of losses and how to identify them? When we go for the survey and the methodology, particularly if you, uh, as a student of NIFTM or uh, any other uh, institution, if you go for the survey of the losses, how much losses are taking place. So, uh, to arrive at a conclusion, you have to see the whole value chain and whole process and uh, where to uh, crack, we can say, is there. So, in our study, uh, we were doing one study, what we found that in uh, uh, it, this is the matter of 2014-15, uh, not today's context. So in Jammu and Kashmir, actually uh, apple is harvested in September, October. So they harvest the apple first, they keep it into the field and uh, they perform the sorting and grading operation. And they will call the trucks or transport. But uh, due to rain and some other conditions, it was always taking 10 to 15 days to reach so till that the uh, apple was in the field itself. Uh, so when uh, they were uh, they start loading, so losses were reflected around 5.5 percent in the grading operation. But when uh, we talk about Himachal Pradesh, they call the truck first because road conditions are very good. So trucks reach immediately within one day, and then they have to harvest the produce within one day and load the truck. So, because of that, uh, they harvest unripe, ripe, and during that process, uh, during harvesting, damage was taking place and loss was around 5%. So, if we analyze the complete situation, neither harvesting method or the process was uh, faulty or there was no need of harvesting equipment in Himachal Pradesh or we don't need grading equipment to reduce the losses in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. We need only good transport facility, timely facility has to reach to the farmer to reduce the losses. So this was a policy intervention we suggested that the transport or infrastructure should be better. Similarly, uh, there are, uh, uh, there was another incident uh, when uh, in Ma Maharashtra what happened uh, in chickpea, they were using high capacity thresers, which are used for the threshing of wheat. So that was damaging the grains and the loss was reflected during the cleaning and grading operation. So, but the reason was the thresher. So we recommended thresher. So whenever uh, we want to identify, I'm, uh, we can give uh, several examples or several regions of the losses, but when we go into the field for the for collecting the data, then we have to analyze where, what, what is the main region uh, which is causing loss in the, all these operations and where to take a dent, uh, make a dent so that we can reduce the losses. Uh, causes of wastage, uh, in Indian condition, the first uh, and foremost, uh, we can say, uh, in our urban uh, situation, the maximum losses are taking place in the marriage palaces and marriages, particularly in the cities, whether it is a small city or in a large city. Earlier, the tradition was different. When a marriage was taking place in a village or anywhere, it was a community or group activity or social activity in which every... Uh, uh, almost all the village was involved, every family was involved and when, uh, whenever there is a surplus food, we always give to the other families to for the consumption for the next day. But, and there was a tradition that poor people always come at the end of a function to take the food. Now in marriage palaces, this, these both, both of these scenarios are not available. So that is why when a marriage ends at uh, 12 o'clock in the night, even it is not possible to collect that food and distribute it to the poor families or poor 
because at 12 o'clock collection means we will uh, we will be able to deliver by 3 uh, 3 in the morning and nobody will be uh, 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 this uh, awake to take that food for consumption so that is the scenario and secondly if food is prepared then we need again a cold chain practice or cold chain process to preserve it so that it can be delivered safely so the first uh, point of wastage is our marriages second where when we throw that material into the in a uh, or leave the material in our plates so that uh, uh, those situations are there, but still uh, we have a good scenario at present, but in coming uh, uh, and coming future, this scenario will become uh, entirely different, may take entirely different aspect. And uh, to judge this, how the food wastage is, particularly uh, if you take uh, the example of just 10 years back, uh, movies in developed countries, the losses were more. And uh, you may find in every TV serial or in every film of the developed countries uh, that they are throwing the cake on each other. Now you will not find this scenario in the Western movies at present. Uh, but we are adopting that situation and uh, we are uh, moving towards the higher losses or higher food wastage in this context. Yeah. So the impacts are uh, in a, so many directions of food loss as well as waste number one for the production we are utilize, uh, we are utilizing our soil fertilizer water and energy sources and uh, we are uh, spending on it and uh, losses uh, after that when we waste it it means we are creating the uh, environmental problem by uh, yeah, bod and cod demands are increased social and health problems greenhouse gas emissions because once wastage has come it has to be processed again to separate in the organic and non-organic then again go for uh, some uh, value addition or uh, uh, production of uh, something from that waste or composting it so we are going for the greenhouse emissions and uh, so many other things so how to reduce the losses number one is at present AI artificial intelligence and IT can uh, help in this uh, particularly to reduce the food wastage how can we collect and uh, efficiently we can collect the uh, surplus food and uh, uh, give it to the needy persons technological solutions wherever technological needs are there there where we can do policy issues uh, we have to identify by the studies in the losses and wastes and we have to make the policies particularly in uh, incentives are uh, given in some of the western world where if you are uh, uh, saving food or donating food to somebody they give 30 percent or 20 percent of that as a tax relief or something like that so that kind of policy issues may come and changing food habits this is another aspect eat fresh is the most important thing and the most critical and uh, serious thing is how can we control our ever increasing population because for population we are uh, doing more agriculture and more production mean more means more loss and more uh, uh, food uh, uh, hands to eat it means there will be more wastage also so if we can control this we can uh, decrease the food losses as well as wasted wastes and our motto should be a grain which is uh, saved it means uh, through processing value addition storage and all other aspects it means we are able to produce a grain uh, for the human being thank you very much thank you dr Sharma. I now request uh, Dr. Nachiket Kutwaliwale. He uh, is a director of an important uh, national institute, Central Institute of Post Harvest Engineering and Technology, Secretariat Ludhiana in uh, ICR. Uh, he will be talking about emerging technologies and uh, new developments in food processing, post harvest management. I 
have opened it but i will tell when to show because not all the slides i'm going to display okay you can just skip this right from here no i can i can skip right from here okay. right now but when i tell then only you show okay. i will i will tell you okay thank you dr narsaya good afternoon all of you my fellow panelists who have thrown light on different aspects of food processing and post harvest technology uh in fact i have a presentation but i won't uh, show you all the slides i will talk about some of the issues which uh, are important related to some new innovations in the area of automation sensor technology and digitization but at the same time i would like to supplement here to dr vishwakarma that uh, food loss and waste is not only the loss and waste of material but it is loss and waste of the resources that have gone into production of that era estimate uh, shows that world over somewhere around 30% of the food is loss and wasted loss is goes from farmer up to retailer and post retailer it is wastage so 13% it is estimated by fao uh, although indian estimates are much lesser than that but probably other countries are having more losses so 13% is estimated as loss and 17% is estimated as waste and the the total uh, the other part of that loss is somewhere around uh, 1.4 billion hectares of land is wasted because of this 30% loss okay the blue water footprint is somewhere around 250 km cube that is equivalent to 16 times flow of river satluj so so these type of losses are also there uh, this is just to supplement to what dr vishwakarma had told you Uh, the new areas of innovations uh, uh, i would like you to hold this at present don't show when i tell you then only show because otherwise it will take too much time don't show it right now okay so uh, some of the new areas of innovations uh, i would simply touch upon a little bit and then i will finally i will go to some slides showing some of the things that we are doing Uh, so some new innovations is uh, the materials for fabrication of machines for structures and packaging uh, these are some of the new areas my other panelists have also touched upon this uh, like uh, dr dingra talked about bulk storage in that the material of storage structures that comes uh, very very important uh, then uh, dr raju talked about uh, packaging material so we are coming out with some very innovative packaging materials also which can be replacement to styrofoam and uh, such such things uh, then as far as processing is concerned uh, for for much period of time we have been talking of non thermal and thermal processing especially in non thermal we are have talking of radiations so these are some of the technologies where lot of uh, digitization is also involved and uh, like uv radiations cold plasma gamma rays these are some of radiation technologies and uh, other non thermal is membrane ozone carbon dioxide fumigation sulfur dioxide fumigation vacuum like dr dingra also talked on storage structures about fumigation so these are some innovations that uh, are taking place but when we talk of uh, digitization is 